Through a unique transatlantic cooperation, this challenge was taken up by the European Space Agency. A second, much smaller probe was built, one that would actually descend to the moon's surface. Named Huygens, after the man that discovered Titan, it was designed to see, sniff, touch, taste, and even listen to the mysterious moon. We didn't know quite what environment we were going into. Um, the atmosphere could have been thicker than we thought or thinner than we thought, uh, warmer or cooler. Uh, we had no idea what the surface was, so there was no guarantee that the probe would keep working after it hit the ground. Every aspect of the probe's design and construction was put to the test. The engineers had to make sure this 400 million pound probe was tough enough for the job. The part of the mission which really terrified me was the high-speed entry. Most of that energy is converted into heat, so the probe glows red hot. And I thought that if, if anything was going to go wrong, that was the most likely uh, phase of the mission for it to happen. The survival of the probe and the success of the whole mission would depend on the precise opening of three small parachutes. It had three parachutes which had been packed for nine years. And those parachutes had to work, you know, at the exact seconds they were supposed to work. So they had to deploy to unfold and really to inflate properly and to work in a sequence because if any of the three parachutes had not worked, we would have lost the whole mission. During the two and a quarter hour descent, specially designed onboard cameras would act as the eyes of the mission. It was hoped they would send home the first detailed images of Titan's surface. For Huygens imaging specialist, Dr. Martin Tomasco, it was imperative that his cameras didn't miss a thing. What we're trying to get is kind of the skydiver's eye view, as if you were outside the probe and falling down through the atmosphere. We don't want to land near some interesting object like the Grand Canyon and not know it's there. To see through the haze has been notoriously difficult. We hope that our big advantage is that we'll fall through the haze and eventually we'll be under most of the haze and be able to see the surface that much more clearly. Having descended through the orange shroud, the climax of the mission would be landing on Titan's surface itself. For 15 years, Professor John Zarnecki has been wondering what the mysterious surface is actually made of. It would be his team's instrument that would eventually make first contact. This is what we call a penetrometer. It's basically a stick, but a rather special stick, because the stick has within it what we call a force transducer. That is something which measures the force as the tip is compressed. The force that, it's, that it experiences depends very much on the nature of the surface. We set up a facility in the lab that would enable us to simulate what would happen when Huygens hit the surface of Titan. get a very different signal if you strike, for example, a sheet of solid ice, if you hit semi-compacted snow, if you, if you struck a liquid, if you landed in a lake, for example. 